And I want to welcome you to our uh, November seminar. It's kind of an exciting, well, they're always exciting. I love all the topics. But this is always a favorite where we have seen real life seniors who've made the move and survived. And uh, they're going to be sharing their stories. So we're delighted to hear those. Um, so for those of you who I have not had the opportunity to meet, I'm Virginia Lacerby. I'm a certified senior housing professional and downsizing coach, and I am a realtor. Um, and several people recently have said, so why, how did you get involved in these seminars, or, or why do you do these seminars? Um, I've been in real estate here, and real estate's a second career. Uh, when we moved here in 2002, and I played, then I decided I should work. Uh, education was my first career, but I was ready for something else. And I thought, okay, I, I'm really interested in working with people and problem solving and so on, so I was interested in real estate. And then over the years, my focus narrowed from real estate generally to especially working with seniors who were looking to move here for retirement, because I think it is such a great retirement area. And with the Jeff Buckner, we did a website really focused on Georgetown TX retirement lifestyle. And then um, I began to see a real need as I was meeting with people who were looking to sell their homes, often to move to independent living, assisted living with family, 55 plus apartment or wherever. That's a big move. It's different than before when we just kind of picked everything up even though we didn't mean to, and put it down in a new place, and then we repeat, and some of those boxes were never unpacked from the previous move or so. But now we're running out of space. And I just, it's, it's overwhelming, and I knew it is. And I knew I wanted to be able to help people to reduce the stress and try to simplify as much as possible. So I reached out to a lot of additional training, and. And this is just a niche that I really love, working with seniors, um, downsizing. The seminars came about because I just saw such a need for information. People don't always have access to information. So this is our seventh year of doing the monthly seminars. And, um, you know, it's, and the topics vary. And so it's always fun to see some people come regardless of the topic. I don't know what the topic is, but it's the second Thursday, so I'm going. <laughs> and others are very content-specific attendees. Um, so whatever your reason for being here, we're delighted to, to have you with us. But indeed, the seminars, for the purpose of seminars, is to educate, equip, and inspire seniors to make informed choices, empowering decisions. Stay in control of their lives, and that's what we we want to give you lots of information to make that happen. Um, so, as I said, I'm a realtor. I also have a downsizing business. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But the focus <coughs> seminar is not marketing; it's informational. But nevertheless, you need information about services and resources that are available. And we have our educational partners are over here in the corner. Uh, these are businesses and services who share commitment and see the importance of people having information. And they're willing to help support the seminars and to come to our monthly meetings and share. So I hope to encourage you after the seminar to visit with the, our, our people in our resource area. Starting over there, we have Will Bowden uh, with Bear Bank Asset Management uh, State. And, well, state planning is always that interesting, the financial part and the legal part. But good guy to talk to uh, about how is our money going to last? And how can we help us plan for that? You, and you're a miracle worker, aren't you? I mean, you were just, it was all taken care of. We love your. No pressure at all. No pressure at all. And if you want to gain brownie points with Will, ask about his five and four year old daughters and their last fishing trip with that. <laughs> he just happens to have pictures to show you. So they are great. So we're glad to have uh, Will and the support of Vera Bank. And then we have Christy uh, Schuler 
Uh, and if you want to gain points with Christy, ask about her son at the Naval Academy, and she will just get the biggest smile. Uh, Christy is with the Wesleyan. Her son's a major player here in Georgetown with the different levels of care, independent assisted memory care. Uh, we had skilled nursing. They also had hospice and home health and home care. There's your source for everything. So we appreciate the support of the Wesleyan. Jessica is uh, here from Grand Le uh, ooh, excuse me, North Star uh, 55 plus community. And we've often talked about these because some of us have become somewhat familiar with independent living and assisted living, but we are seeing a real kind of upsurge, I think, in this work but of our 55 plus apartments. I know a lot of you love, live in Sun City, which is a 55 plus active adult community, generally home ownership or rental individual homes. Apartments such as at North Star are the, you don't have to take care of the house and all that. Um, so that's an alternative when people want to move perhaps to a smaller area. The, and we all have to figure out what works best for us. In um, the 55 plus apartments, they have great activities for seniors. There is no meal plan, but I do know they have special events with meals or food. Um, so anyway, but we appreciate uh, North Star being with us. And I skipped our table at uh, Debbie Rockwell we are with the Seniors Living Smarter Services table. That is our downsizing business. So that not only can we help you with the real estate, but we can do the oversee the move and have on our team liquidation specialists and property prep. We can do it all for you. So you can visit with Debbie at that time. Okay, so let me see. I think our partners. Um, okay, so we and it was fun visiting some people on their way in and go. Yeah, you know, I've been to quite a few this year, so we're going to do a little, let, now this is a, oh, well, you're, you're going to get out easy. Brielle's not here really to check your honesty. I know I have this. If you have been to, let's start with three, three or more seminars this year, here at this place, stand up. Let's see. I know some of you, oh, no, we start here in January, so if you've been to quite Good. Quite a few of you. Okay. We won't well, like, don't sit down yet unless you get eliminated. It's kind of musical chairs. If you have been here, let's say, five or more times, continue standing. I know it's getting harder if you to do that. I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. You are close. Okay. If you've been here, let's say, eight or more, stay, continue standing. But you're not standing, Chris. You're not following directions. <laughs> okay, you should. So, there, okay, yes. Yeah. So she has done uh, Garvey, had Sight, Lori, and her troop of followers. Okay, Leslie, Cindy, all right. So, anyway, thank you all for your support. You know, these seminars are for you, and it's just great to have the support and the interest of people. So now let's go to the other end. How many of you, this is your first seminar to be here? Okay, stand up so we can see. <laughs> Not to put your own spot, George, you see. Okay. And some of these people are going to be taking tests when they get home to, and not a COVID test. But they were sent to reference when their new wife is with you. So some people have a big responsibility. Their wives are going to be questioning them, Steve, to make sure they got all the information. But we're glad you all have been here and continue coming. Um, so let me explain about the binders. Um, for those of you who have been here before, you have your nifty dipty binder, and um, each month we add the packet. Now, we didn't use binders today, but you've got the material, but we're going to start, so coming, we do not do a seminar in December. If you come the second week of December, or whatever's going on in the church, I guess you can participate, <laughs> but we won't be here. We'll be back in January 
And so, for those of you who've been before, no, you're not. If you already have a binder, you don't get a new one every year. You keep building on to your existing one. For those who don't have binders, you will get your new binder in January. Um, and like you say, at the, each month, I forgot to pick up my packet, but there is a packet that has handouts or related information about today's topic, a feedback form, and other information. So, and they're all color coordinated. Let me, okay, here's my good picture. Okay, so this is the packet. Last month, um, Brielle works very hard for the rainbow look. Uh, so we had orange clear sailing ahead for October and now our November one. And stick it in there, pull out the pages, put it behind it, and you have a nifty, nifty um, handout, place to keep your handouts collected. So that's how the binders work. At the end of the seminar today, Brielle is going to put out extra copies that we've had left during the year. So if you did not attend some earlier seminars, then you want to look to see what's there, they are there. Which also reminds me, I just want to make sure, because if you're here, you don't really need this. But for seminars that you are not able to attend, we do record them, and they are online. It's about a week later, Jeff does get them up online for us. And even people have been here, if you want to go back, or share them with friends. They're there on the SeniorsLivingSmarter.com website under blog post, I believe. And so they're, they're all there. That was one of the good things about COVID was when we started, you know, there, because we were doing Zoom seminars live, but then once we came here, uh, we made the decision not to broadcast live, but to continue recording. And so they are there for you to have access to. Okay. So that's the binder. So today's topic, uh, how to know when you're ready. If I even just had a dollar for everybody who said, well, when is the right time to move? It's going to depend on you your situation. But we have three experts today who are going to share with you their stories about that. Um, the, um, is that a cell phone or is that a smoke alarm? Or a, a, bird, a bird wants to be educated. Okay. Um, in your packet today, I think, nothing like picking any all the time. To me. Ah, yes, you have a stages of readiness handout in your packet today. And so if you look at that, you know, over the year we shared this several times. And, you know, it's, it's the study of change, you know. And a lot of you worked with this during your careers or, or whatever. But within the senior industry, those of us who are involved in downsizing, we often talk about the first step being denial. I never, ever can go live in one of those old people's homes. Period. And you may stay at that place for a while. But then sometimes, you begin to ask some questions. You begin to get some information. You go on our community tours and you decide, hey, there's some possibility here. Talk to people who are living in communities that you're going to be uh, doing today, seeking out information. So that's just that thinking. And somehow, for some people, you magically begin to, hmm, if I wanted to make this move, how would I do it? Beginning to take steps towards the planning, and that's what we're going to be focusing on with our panel today. Again, gathering resources, becoming more specific about what might be a good match for you. Fortunately, we all like different things, so there are always different ways to accommodate that. And then, when we take action, we're ready to go. 
And I often tell people, and a lot of people from communities, I know Christy's heard this, and Jessica probably too, people may go visit Wesleyan or North Star. Okay, I'm ready to make this move. You drive back home, you go in your house, and what happens? Not you see a lot of stuff. Uh, never mind, I'm not going to make that move. I just can't cope with this, I'll stay where I am. And maybe that's a good decision for you, but it may not be a good decision. And there are resources to help. And that's what we always want people to know. Uh, I didn't put them out today. We have our downsizing puzzle of all the pieces and how that can be put together to help people. But you start taking that action. And um, definitely going to hear some stories about that. Now, this is usually where we have stopped our stages of readiness for you know, where we've been. Today, we've gone ahead and added that next step. In, I guess, more of the true model, it's often called maintenance or maintaining. But we wanted a different word. For those who make that transition, we really see it as a time of thriving, thrive, and you're going to hear more about why. Um, you've made the move to your new home. Embrace it, go for it, enjoy it. And that's what we're going to be learning about today. But I think, it, okay, true confession here. For those of you as couples, you know, you got to be respective or something. We're not always be on the same page. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us who are there to help, I, and I, I laugh, I don't know if that's the right word. And I've been sometimes like, guys, I really think we need to have a marriage counselor on our team. Which, you know, uh, so far we're not going there. Jenny, we might go there uh, to help us with that. But anyway, um, I just think it's helpful to see. And for some of you, now I was there, now I'm here, now I'm headed in this next direction. Okay, with that background, let's have our panelists come up. And let's see, I'm going to have Deb, if you'll sit there, I'm going to put Nathan in the middle, and Betty, I'm going to go triple and four. Thank you. Virginia was doing them at First Church of Hearing at that time. 
and I had attended a couple of them, and I thought, that could be the answer. Maybe, maybe I should investigate a little further. So, um, I have four words in my alphabet that really guide what I do. Um, first one is prayerful. So I visited with my prayerful person a long time and um, decided, yes, I, I do need to do this. Um, the second thing in my vocabulary is I gave speak, hold the mic up close. <coughs> I'm new to this. I got my hearing aid, oh. so it's, everything's very muffled on. Sorry. Sorry, okay. That's okay. Um, second word in my vocabulary is proactive. And uh, to me, if you think about something long enough, you kind of get an idea of what you should do. Uh, the next word in my vocabulary would be decis decisive. So you've thought about it. You talk with other people about it. Make the decision, yes or no, are you going to do a particular thing? And then the last word in my vocabulary is prayerful again. You need to talk to this person and find out if you are making the right decision. Nobody knows that but yourself. And when you, when you have, when I have gone through those four steps, it's time to make a move. So I did. And we're going to hear more about your move in just a minute. Thanks for that introduction and we appreciate that. Nathan. And is Nathan Smith no relation? Okay. You better say yeah, we're all over the place. Um, we were looking at health changes. Uh, well, first of all, we lived in Georgetown. We lived in Texas Traditions. It's a small 55 plus community below the dam, uh, Lake Georgetown. And uh, we lived there for about six years before we decided it was time to make a change. And um, it was primarily due to health changes um, that we decided to do that and based upon my experience with my family, uh, aunts and uncles and my parents and everything that uh, kind of prodded us into making the decision to move. She is living at Oaks Gracious living out here on Williams Drive and Nathan and his wife Ken are living at Longhorn Village in Steiner Ranch. And we're going to fill in some more about those bits and pieces. So uh, health changes and you wanted to be more proactive and be in a place where care would be readily available. Right, okay. Beverly. I'm Beverly Holland. Uh, in 2003, my husband and I, after 37 years in Corpus Christi, bought a house in Sun City in Georgetown. And we were there for 16 years. Um, I've been at Provident Crossing Independent Living Community for a little over three years. Okay. So we're going to find out more about that story in just a minute, too. So we've got three different types of communities here. Two independent, well, they're all independent living, and we'll fill in on Nathan's in just a minute. So now what I'm going to do, Betty already addressed part of this. But what factors influence you to make the decision? You've kind of been thinking about it. And we, Bev, why don't you start us? What factors said, let's go for it? Number one, I had been attending Virginia seminars for some time. And when she would say, you know, how many seminars have you attended this year? I was one of the ones still standing <laughs> at the end of all that. Um, we, my husband and I talked about the day when, wouldn't it be nice, my sister in Houston has been in the administration end of, of independent living and so we had seen places where she worked and always dreamed, oh we could just come here and just live and get rid of all this burden on us from maintaining a house. Uh, I think that was one of the things that really made uh, our decision for us. We were just tired of maintaining a house. We, we had had three different houses in Sun City. My husband was an architect, and so we 
moved, downsized from Corpus Christi into a smaller house, then he needed a bigger garage, and so we moved to a bigger house, and then he had health issues, and so we moved back into a smaller uh, floor plan, and it, it just became obvious that health reasons and maintenance of a home was going to become too much for us. So I'll tell you more about that, I think, when she asks different questions as to how we decided on problem causing. Okay, good. So Nathan, tell us a little bit what it caused your, or what was the kind of catalyst for the, you, you mentioned health conditions, so what else? Um, yes, it was primarily health. Uh, my wife, Kiana, had a stroke uh, around the first of the year last year, and it really affected her memory, mostly, uh, she has uh, good health otherwise. She has some other health conditions. But because of her memory function, she also has uh, type 1 diabetes, uh, which takes a lot of maintenance to keep on top of that all the time. And so my biggest concern was that if anything happened to me, even a short-term effect, if I were to end up in the hospital for any reason for three days, um, it was like, well, how is she going to be able to manage uh, all of her conditions uh, safely? And so we started investigating various possibilities around that. Um, so that was really the thing that pushed us, that pushed me, okay. <laughs> to start looking at uh, making a change. And I know from when we talked, because you mentioned a while ago, you had a lot of family members who had had different kinds of care over the years and pretty sensitive to how expensive it could become and how do we plan ahead for that. And so you were kind of pulling together a lot of family history too to think about perhaps we need to go ahead and make a move. Right. I, have, I had an aunt that uh, made the decision early on to move into a what we've moved into is a continuing care facility, or uh, community. <laughs> and, um, we were she, told not to use that word. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she really enjoyed that. Uh, she lived in San Francisco, which is a very expensive place to live, but she really enjoyed uh, having made that decision uh, because she didn't want her sons who lived up uh, north of San Francisco to be responsible for her care. Um, and then my parents were kind of like, you know, we're going to live in our house until they take us out and put us in the ground. Uh, but their health changed where they finally decided they needed to make a change. Um, and so they made their change late in life uh, and late in health, really. And uh, so they didn't really get to enjoy uh, the place that they moved to, primarily because of their health. Um, so there was that aspect. And then I had an uncle uh, who tried to convince my aunt that they needed to move. Uh, she absolutely refused. She reached a point where she could not care for herself. He was at a point where he could not care for, for her either. So they started paying all the expenses to have 24-hour health care to take care of my aunt. And basically, before she passed away, they went bankrupt. Mm. Um, and he was forced to place her into a nursing home under Medicaid because it was all they could afford to do. Uh, and then he ended up living in his house alone. Uh, and even after she passed away, he was alone. Uh, and so that was kind of a sad situation for them. Okay. So kind of having all that history said, we should probably make the decision to move while we can still enjoy it. Okay, make it faster. Okay, Betty? Well, I could just say me too. <laughs> and that would about cover what you've already heard. Um, I had a favorite uncle who was in a nursing home for many years <coughs> and um, it was just, sad to visit him because he was, he had a bed and that was about it because of his physical condition well we're all going to get sick you know sooner or later of some way or another 
and I wanted to be the one who decided where I was. I didn't want somebody else mm -hmm. making that decision for me and, you know, putting the onus on them. Uh, my daughter and son both live in Georgetown and would be perfectly capable, you know, of, of doing those things for me, but I don't want them to. Uh, there may come a day when they have to, and you know, the mom, hush, we're going to do this. <laughs> but right now, that hasn't happened. So um, it just seemed like the thing to do at the time, and I, I haven't regretted it for not one minute. Betty's uh, background, and she said she attended some of our seminars early on and invited me to come over and visit with her to see her place. And, but she also made it very clear, but I'm not moving. I understand that. We're just going to go visit your home. And then, lo and behold, she calls one day and says, <laughs> she said, okay, I'm ready to make a move. I don't know where I'm going, but you're going to help me, and I'm moving. <laughs> and that probably within the next six weeks, it all happened. And uh, that when that, the thought of breaking leaves and all of that maintenance, and she just decided her prayerful, proactive way to make the move. Now one thing I'm gonna, I hope it's okay, Bev, I know you and Bill had talked about talking about this, but also you were one probably more, let's make this move. Tell us a little bit yeah, more about yes, that. Yes, I, I was the one saying, ooh, Bill, let's do this. And he said, no, you're going to hate it. You love <laughs> to be out and, and, you know, walking the neighborhood and everything. I did love Sun City. I did. Um, but as his health declined, he suddenly started coming around. And I was the one saying, well, maybe we should stay in the house another year or two. We just had had the master bath. We redesigned and renovated and everything, and we could have enjoyed the bigger shower, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, but then, yes, he ended up in the emergency room and came home and said, I think we need to rethink this. <laughs> and we, we had visited with Virginia and, and with others. So when we get to those questions, I'll, I'll fill you in a little more. But yeah, he, he came around then before I did at the end. <laughs> An interesting story there, people have made some references about when we visited communities. Prior to pandemic, we did some field trips to selected communities. Now we're doing these community discovery tours, very similar. But Bill, and now Bev had been on several, but I think Bill joined you to go to Covenant Crossing. And why, by happenstance, yes, someone looking out for us, uh, we had tour guides to take us around and we crossing. Bev and Bill went to Texas Tech. Now they're very quiet about it. We never known they went to Tech. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? His tour guide was from Texas Tech. He lived in Sun City then. But he was um, Bill made the comment when we were leaving that day. He said, you know, I see, he seems so much better. <coughs> Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yes, uh, the couple that we already knew who did live in, in Problem Crossing, the man had been the president of the Texas Tech Ex Students Association, and of course we were attending those meetings as well. And um, he, he did have, the man did have pretty serious health situation and he looked better than we had ever seen him look. I mean he looked rested, he was active, he was going to exercise classes and so I think that that helped tell Bill that, that you know it, it's a good thing to be that proactive like Betty mentioned. So and in this case the gentleman was on a motorized cart but very you know and that's one of the things that have come up to me. Oh, but there's so many walkers and so many carts. I don't want to live with those old people. Um, <coughs> jump to that question, Beth, because you made a big point about people not being overly reactive or whatever. Well, I don't know how far you want me to go, but we, um, we've lived in Providence Crossing for a little over three years now. And you first go in, and I don't think you notice uh, the walkers, the, um, the electric 
scooters that people are using. Uh, if that bothers you, if it makes you feel, I'm too young to be in a place like this, then you, you better look someplace else. But I think you're all going to see that no matter where you end up going. You know, we have special parking places where people are supposed to park their electric scooters so they don't block an entrance or an exit or, or whatever, and we don't get closed down by the fire marshal. But yeah, you really need to look around. Um, you know, I could go on into this. I don't know how far you want me to go. You know, that's part of it, of aging. And sometimes we kind of dismiss people, you know, I, I always, I'm just going to say his name, I always think of Ron Trapp, who lives over at Westland <laughs> Independent now. He's on a neuropathy, he has a motorized park, but never ever get in his way if he is trying to leave the Westland to get to his car to get to watch a girls athletic event. Volleyball, basketball, softball. And you think, now, it, it takes a while, and it's a real effort, but I was going in one day, and he's don't have time to talk to you, Virginia. I gotta go, I gotta go. <laughs> so, you know, we underestimate, and, and some people who don't use any devices can be a lot more isolated and not as involved, but we got to, and in independent living, um, I mean, I Christy had her hand, I was gonna say too, they, they can, anyway, Christy, do you wanna to add to that point? I, I just wanna say that when I do tours in our independent Walkers, they have scooters, and I may have a tour that's kind of turned off by that. I always tell them it's not cool until you need one, right? <laughs> so you don't want to get kicked out because you need one. So we want you to be as mobile for as long as you can. So if that's what you need to not fall and go up to the next level, then let's use it. Yeah, thanks, and that's true. So you know, we just just say that. And one of the things, obviously, is leads into a how to select a community where you go. So we've talked a little bit about the decisions, home maintenance, and health are usually the two main things that are kind of the catalyst, catalyst so we need to go ahead and make a move here. Okay, so one decision's made. Now, where are we going? How do we decide where we are going? Again, we all have different likes, we have different interests, different you know, hobbies or expectations. Um, let's start with Betty. You went to Oates, excuse me, Gracious Living. So how did you make the decision about where you <coughs> wanted to move? Well, <laughs> I had some criteria that this place would have to meet. You know, I couldn't just move anywhere. So um, I did not want to live on, as a matter of fact, I said I will not live on Williams Drive. That's <laughs> <laughs> where she lives, but anyway. <laughs> And I will not live on anything but the first floor. <laughs> well, I live on Williams Drive on the third floor at the very end of a long hall. Uh, but it's, uh, there's good and bad in everything you do. It, the good thing is I have very quiet neighbors because nobody wants to live at the end of the third <laughs> hall. Uh, the lady that lives directly across the hall from me, I just had her 101st birthday. Uh, she was one of the first women in the women's army air, or, or, or the first group of women that were in the, the military long time ago. She's, uh, she does use a walker, uh, but she's very quiet with it. We have carpet on the hallway, so you don't hear these people moving around. It was um, when Virginia and I went, we looked at a, another place first, and I thought it was just way too small for me. So, the apartment. Yes. Um, and it didn't look like they had very much parking in that particular area anyway, so I thought, well, I'm not giving out my car. You know, I have to have my car. So, um, we moved on to the, the Oaks, and I immediately liked the apartment that I was shown. Um, it wasn't as big as my house, of course, and there again, it was on it was on Williams Drive on the <laughs> third floor of the building. But you have to make concessions in everything you do practically. So um, I thought, okay, this is 
I can I can live I can do this. So I we went back downstairs and signed a check and put a deposit on the place and we started making preparations to move and sell my house. And it was a good time to sell a house, of course, so that was helpful. Area. Yeah. Uh, we did that and it that all went smooth and um, I, all of my prior moves had been through the military, so moving was easy. You know, you just open the door and let the Packers come in. <laughs> Not so on your own. <laughs> um, what I ended up doing basically was packing what I wanted and what I could put in this small apartment uh, that I thought I couldn't just live without. I had to have it with me and everything else I left right there in the house, turned the key, walked out. And uh, fortunately, in my case, um, my son and daughter both had facilities that could take all my spare stuff, mm -hmm. you know, things that, well, I might need this later, or this has got a lot of sentimental value to it. I can't just throw it out. <sighs> that went out the window. <laughs> um, I packed what I knew I would use. Um, Virginia gave me the name of a moving group that would come and haul my stuff over. And uh, within two weeks, we were done. Mm -hmm. She had sold the house, and um, I had finally told my kids I was moving. And <laughs> I got a lecture on that. Um, but so there weren't that in please. charge. And uh, my son said, Mom, the next time you want to move, could you give us a little more notice? <laughs> uh, I had to tell when we went to, like you said, we visited a community and, you know, she had her own reservations for her criteria. So then we went to, it turns out, the Oaks at Oaks Precious Living. And it is a rather unusual apartment. It is a very large apartment. It's a one bedroom apartment, but it has a neat large living area. And you could tell, you know, it, that sold her on it. And so I said, I remember this is your kitchen area. You have a refrigerator, a microwave, a little sink. A, a little sink. A little sink <laughs> and a little counter. And I'll never forget to have any, you know, is this okay? Well, we looked before, you had a small kitchen. Virginia, I told you I'm not cooking. <laughs> That's another reason people make the move. So, uh, Anyway, although she does like her food better than some institutions do, but that's another conversation. Okay, I'm going to skip to Bev and then come back to Nathan. So another little interesting there, you know, she kind of moved and she told her kids during the process, but she was already well into it. But uh, yeah, so Beverly, what was your decision to go to Provident Crossing? My husband was an architect, and we never went anywhere that there was not one of those long construction tape measures in our car. <laughs> so when, when we were looking, he would measure walls and window, do windows break up that wall? Is there a closet in the middle of that wall? You can't put furniture there, you know. So we literally are in an apartment at Provident Crossing, where we took our living room and dropped it into Provident Crossing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how perfect it was for us. We rented a two bedroom. Um, so one room we use as an office, our computers and, and uh, his business papers that we have to save for another 10 years, I think. <laughs> um, the other room is, is the master bedroom and bath, and then there's a second bath also off of um, the, the kitchen. We have a full kitchen. That was not a big decision for me because like Betty, I was not going to cook. Where I live, we get included with our rent. We get three meals a day, and that helped make our decision. I never had to cook breakfast unless I just wanted to stay in my pajamas. I, you know, we could always go down. There's two choices for lunch and dinner. There are several choices for breakfast. So I can always eat what I want to eat if I want to go down. And I go down, I guess 99% of the time. Some breakfasts I have something in my room, <coughs> but 
the, the decision was made for spatial planning, I think, more than anything else, plus the fact that our daughter lives in Round Rock about five minutes away. Now, with that being said, I've been relegated to the responsibility to drive my 16-year-old granddaughter to high school every morning. <laughs> and there are many mornings I just think, oh, I would love to sleep in just 30 more minutes, you know. But I don't. But it, it's it's really been great to have her in the car with me and to see what she's wearing that day. <laughs> Talk a little bit about um, her day and her tests that she's taking and et cetera. But um, the decision was really the wall space and then plus the fact that our daughter is, is very, very close. So again, we see the importance of the uh, apartment. Now, the fact that there was a past president of the Tech alumni living there probably talked to get it into that apart or into that community. But all of the different reasons what works for us. And now it's interesting well maybe we'll hit Nathan for next and then we'll see. Um, Nathan, tell us about your decision making. And this will be a show and tell. Well Virginia asked me to bring my spreadsheet, uh, which I put together. It's about eight pages of all the questions that I had concerns about in making our move. Um, one of the primary things that I knew that for our move was I wanted to look at uh, continuing care retirement communities. Uh, they're kind of a specialized uh, organization in terms of the level of care and you need to qualify to move into these uh, communities because they are basically uh, like the one that we moved into which is Longhorn Village um, once you're in they're saying that they will take care of you for the rest of your life and as we age and our health changes Kind of the last thing that I wanted to be doing is moving. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to make sure of was that as our health changed, that Kiana and I would be able to stay together. Uh, and that's one of the things that we can do at Longhorn because they have all of the facilities there. So as our health changes, we can move from independent living which is a requirement for moving in. You have to be, your health has to be such that you can live independently when you first move there. Uh, but as your health changes, then you can go to assisted living if <coughs> necessary. Uh, you can go to nursing care if that becomes a requirement. Uh, if you have any health changes that require rehabilitation, they have those facilities available. And they basically guarantee that you will be able to move from one place to the next in the same location. Uh, and so that was important to us because as we know with COVID, things happen and people get separated because of their health conditions. And we wanted to make sure that that didn't happen to us. I want um, to jump in for just a minute too. Um, as he said, Terminologies can get us in a lot of confusion and a lot. Longhorn Village is a CCRC, Continuing Care Retirement Community, in that, yes, you're guaranteed levels of care. You do pay a large enrollment fee, and you're guaranteed a contractual relationship of what you would pay in the remainder of your life. Now, we have other great communities here, that, like it was Wesleyan and Delaney and Grant. They offer all levels of care. And if you are in their community, you have priority to move from independent to assistant. And so I don't want to downplay that at all. The difference with, and people can have some interesting discussions about these, but our two CCRCs, but that was one of the things you, we were on a time crunch to get your home sold so you could, you were making a large, down, or a large enrollment fee. Right. We needed the money from our house to basically pay for the entrance fee uh, to get into Longhorn Village. And then that was one of the other things in terms of the qualifications. You have to financially qualify to move into these places because, again, they are guaranteeing your level of care and they want to make sure that you don't run out of money uh, before you die. <laughs> 
the one thing that uh, most of the CCRCs in this area provide is that they will refund to your estate a portion of that entrance fee. Uh, it may not benefit you, but it's something that you can consider leaving to your family uh, at the time you leave. And with Longhorn, it was set up such that if we decided to leave at any time, then we would get a portion of that entrance fee back as well. So that was another consideration in moving there. So on your spreadsheet, you checked out several communities. You were looking at what were some of the top things you were looking at when you compared communities? Well, some of the things that I was looking at was really the cost of moving in. What was that going to cost us? Uh, what does the monthly fee cover? Um, what were the meal costs? Uh, so these were all broken down in terms of what they provided. Um, what were the different dining options that they provided? Uh, parking, were they pet friendly? Uh, kind of trying to figure out the estimate for the lifetime cost if we were to move there. Uh, what were the financial, uh, what was the financial condition of the place we were considering? Because uh, you read about this in the news every once in a while where one of these places runs into financial difficulty and ends up closing down and then all the residents need to go find someplace else to live. So I wanted to make sure that the facility, um, our community, <laughs> that I was moving into was financially secure uh, and we wouldn't need to worry about that. Uh, the application process, what did we need to do to qualify to move in? Uh, then I, because of COVID going on at the time we were looking, it was like, how did they deal with the extreme conditions? You know, what happened uh, within the facility during COVID? What happened in the facility when we had that ma major freeze in February and people were losing power and things like that? How do they deal with those types of situations? Uh, and then getting into the types of accommodations. What accommodations did they provide? Was it only one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom? Uh, in Longhorn Village, they go all the way from one bedroom apartments up to villas. Uh, they have uh, these huge houses. <laughs> if you can afford to, you can move into. And it can be just like, you know, living in any suburb. So that was uh, one of the things to consider as well. Um, or some of the other, oh, the amenities uh, that they provided uh, in the facility. Did they have the exercise rooms? Did they have pools? Uh, did they have uh, places to go play games? Uh, community events, how did they deal with that? Did they have facilities for that? Um, movie rooms, uh, I mean, some of these places, and Longhorn Village is one of them, uh, has a wide range of facilities available that the community uses uh, all the time. Uh, they have an active activities director that will plan out your day and keep you busy every single day of the week <laughs> if you want them to. Uh, but you can also just kick back and stay in your apartment and uh, live your life like you were in a single family house. Um, did they provide transportation? Because that was another thing that as you age, and I know that it's happened with my wife, she doesn't really drive now. Uh, she can in a pinch, although we don't like it, but <laughs> she can. Uh, but that's the other thing that's going to change as we age. We're going to get to the point where we just don't want to drive anymore. So if that comes up, it's like, how do we get around? Uh, and so that was another consideration. Uh, and then what were the services that they provided? Do they provide the apartment clean and uh, kind of all of the other services around that? Uh, and then I also had questions specific to what happens if we do need to move to assisted living? What's available under those circumstances? Uh, what happens if we need nursing care, what happens if we need rehab, those types of things. So, like I said, I got carried away. <laughs> wow. 
Joe, I gave David a bad time about his. Uh, we were talking about asking questions. Your last month's seminar, we were talking about distant communities and asking questions, and they've touched on some of those things. You know, what kind of amenities? What is the meal plan? Are there three meals a day? Or do you have 300 points to use during the month? But no, what are your meals served meal, uh, family style three times a day? Fortunately, we all have different likes. But I laughed when they said, Sharon, we're going to. In a very positive way, I mean, the homework that they had done on what would be the best place. So when I invited Nathan to be on this, I said, you have to bring your spreadsheet with you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and for those of you who are detailed spreadsheet people, uh, here's a resource for you to go to. OK. Um, now, let's skip over here. How has your move worked out? I'm going to start with Beverly. How has, okay, you, you blew it a little bit, but you made this decision. And I th it's interesting because Nathan and Betty are within more or less their first year. You're a few months past your first year is almost complete. Beverly's been there three or so three plus. Years. Well, so well, three, um, three you made years. the decision, you know, they, not all decisions. You know, I, I, I want to respond about oh. the uh, how did you, oh. who, who did you talk to about moving? And other than Bill and me talking to each other, no one. We did not even tell our daughter until we were sitting there ready to put our deposit down. And then I called her and said, are you free to run over here? And she said, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but of course, before that point arrived where we signed on the dotted line, and I would all highly recommend you talk to your financial advisor we talked to our CPA and we talked to Virginia to see how the housing market was going. We hit right at the beginning of the housing boom. It took a month, I think, to sell our house. We had just moved into the Providence and were there maybe a month when we got a contract on the house and it closed right away. So it, it was a dream to have done that. The move itself, I, I would not have changed a thing. I firmly believe that God was sitting on my shoulder the day we got the call from Jacqueline, who, who was the, what are they called? Marketing. The marketing the person and said, we have one of our best two bedrooms available. And Bill and I had just said, we need to go revisit Providence Crossing. So it was like, God said, yeah. You, you do. It's time to do this. Um, we were there a little over a year when Bill's health really failed and he, he passed away two years ago. I can't tell you the support and the encouragement I have gotten from the staff, from our friends we had made at Providence Crossing. Everyone knew Bill. I mean, he was one that knew everybody's name before I did, you know, and would stay down after breakfast and talk for another hour while I was upstairs doing something else. But the, the, the move itself was wonderful. They have amazing activities. I can exercise six mornings a week if I want to. Um, they offer a Bible study if, if you're so inclined. Uh, they offer outings where you can go on the bus. So like Nathan, you, you know, they say when you move to Sun City, you have to retire from retiring. It's kind of that way at these places, too. You have to decide, what can I really do and still get my laundry done? <laughs> that type thing. Um, I, I think no move is easy, but we chose to have our family help us free of charge. <laughs> I think I bought them pizza. But, you know, it, it, it all worked out. We started eliminating things, and, and luckily family took some pieces of furniture that we uh, didn't need any longer. But as I said, most of our house dropped into place. And I have far too many pots and pans under the cabinet that I do not use, and so that's kind of a project upcoming to eliminate some of that. But. It's, it's been great for, for me. I am so happy to have been there the two years that Bill has been gone because I knew everybody and I'm involved in the choir there. I'm on a committee for our 
Christmas bonuses. I still drive into Georgetown twice a week uh, because my church is here. You know, I, I can't tell you what a difference it has made in my life. And I think I have stayed healthier because of it. You know, when you share that, it's like you mentioned the gentleman who, who we talked about, knows the, you know, he looked so much better, and you, you always look beautiful, but that, that whole point is reducing that stress. And I'll never forget, because this has been ongoing. Beth wanted to move, well, until you decided maybe not. But <laughs> earlier on, you wanted to move, and Bill wasn't going to have any part of it. And then things changed. And she kind of, we've been to Provident Crossings, and a couple weeks later she calls and says, uh, we need you to come over, we're moving to Provident Crossings. And I'm like, we signed our deposit, we're moving in two weeks. Like, oh, or whatever it was. Yeah. We, we moved in a month. Yeah. We signed the papers in early July, and we were in our apartment by August the 3rd. Wow. So. And Tamorian's son helped with this transition. He bought their, their son bought, Bev's home as it all turned out, small world here, so uh, that was great. Okay, how has the move worked for you and Kiana? Well, I can say we're still moving. Uh, <laughs> you no, know, everything is out of their house. It's just yeah. kind of a lot. Are you have Well, we had about a 3,500 square foot house in Austin before we moved to Georgetown. And we didn't downsize at all to move into a 2,100 square foot house. <laughs> and um, so it was quite a challenge to get rid of a lot of stuff. Um, I had found Virginia's club uh, website and uh, had started attending her seminars and got a lot of information on how to do that. And fortunately, Virginia provided a lot of uh, references for services that we could use and so we used a service uh, to basically help us pack. Um, I had pretty much, or the two of us, had pretty much done all of our previous moves. We packed everything up in boxes and cleaned out all the closets and everything ourselves. Uh, but this time, given everything that was going on, I decided I wasn't going to do that. So we hired somebody to help with that. Um, and that worked out really well. Uh, once we found the apartment that we were going to move into and knew how, what the size of it was, we were able to sit down and, and measure it all out, <laughs> which you have to do, um, to figure out where everything was going to go. Um, the funny thing was when the people came in to give us an estimate of what it was going to cost to move us, there was two of them, and they walked through our house and looked at everything, and they came back, and they kind of compared their notes and say, why is this so much? <laughs> and then they went and looked back, and then they came and said, you two are very good at hiding things. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of stuff in closets and some big art pieces. And yeah, so... Um, but we managed to get rid of what we needed to get rid of and keep and some of the stuff we still need to get rid of. Well, that's okay. Okay, so Skip, you, you did that. Now, what about your life at Longhorn Village? Oh. Okay, so um, kind of the decision process was my making the decision primarily because Kian wanted to stay in the house. So we kind of went through that for quite a while, probably even after we moved. Um, but now that we've kind of settled in, she's liking it a lot more uh, and it's getting a lot more comfortable living there and starting to participate more in some of the events and things that are going on. Uh, I'm really happy that we made the move and I was kind of really looking forward to it because I was doing the cooking and I was doing the cleaning I was doing the yard work. <laughs> got rid of all of that, but I don't have to do that anymore. Um, so that turned out great. The only thing is we've got a lot of the artwork still piled up behind our day bed, still in the original wrapping as it was moved, because we're just not sure where it's going to hang or how we're going to hang it. Um, and because there's so many other things to do that are more fun, <laughs> it's uh, probably going to be a long-term project. So one of the things from phone conversations I've had since the move with you 
So it's interesting about, I'll, I'll leave a message in your call. Well, we were down doing such and such, you know. So I see both of you, and kind of picking on the piano here, but you, it's been a lot easier to be involved in activities when you just walk down the hallway than have to go find an activity. Adjustment doesn't happen overnight. There are going to be those rough times, you know, but we still say, how do you embrace the change and, and go for it? You know, so I know, Chris, I don't know what you would say, or some people, some of the communities say, you know, it takes at least a couple of months to, to, to get situated. And so people who want a perfect day one, you know, come on, you've got to, you know, so settling in time, and, but it seems from that you all are really engaged in the activities and, and Bev certainly has from what she shared. Betty, what about your, your uh, did you make the right decision? I did. Um, I, I did. Um, one of the, in my community where I'm living, uh, all of the same amenities are offered. I mean, you can choose to participate or not. It's up to you, you know. Um, I prefer really to take care of my own meals in my apartment because otherwise I waste so much time sitting downstairs at the dining table waiting until the meal is there because you have to go down early to get a seat <laughs> and sit where you, wherever you want to but you have to get there ahead of the meal if you want to have your own group with you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In this type of community, the meals are all served family style. Mm -hmm. So there are tables, of, it's a, in, this, in her community, four people to a table. So if they want to have their friends, they get there early. So that's one of the things when we talk about, not only is it three meals a day, or is it points, is it whatever. This particular Oaks at uh, Oaks Versus Living, the philosophy of that management <coughs> system is the importance of being with people and 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 they value that. Mm -hmm. uh, some people know Parkwood Meadows down at 620. It's the same, three meals. Now Ben was saying this, yes, there's, you've got lots of, or several meal options, same thing at Wesleyan, you've got your dining room, but you also have more of a grab and go bistro. But those are things you want to check out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but overall, I mean, there's some things that may not be absolutely perfect, but <laughs> well, there are things that might not please you exactly, but you work around them. Um, um, I didn't know anybody living there when I moved in, but right away at this table for four, the three people that I happened to be sitting with, I liked immediately. Uh, one of the ladies um, coincidentally was from my hometown. We grew up in the same town, in the same neighborhood. Uh, she is a year older than me, so she was a year ahead of me in school, in elementary school at the same place, junior high at the same place, and graduated the same high school a year apart. Uh, she nearly fell off the chair when I told her where I was from. Me too! <laughs> But they have, uh, those three ladies have become uh, very good friends and I have named them my posse because they take care of my, my very existence. Um, I, I will readily admit to the fact that I'm scared of the dark, have been all my life. Um, I have not given up my choir at church. Well, we meet at night and star, and it's getting darker every, you know, as we get into the season. But these three ladies um, wait for me downstairs at, by the main entrance. Every Wednesday night, they go down there and sit, two of them in their walkers and the other one in a chair. Uh, and they talk, you know, I don't know what they managed to talk about. They've been together all day. <laughs> But they wait, because see, the doors are all locked at 8.30. Mm -hmm. And I don't get home probably until 9. And everybody's away. You don't see a soul up and walking around, and it's dark. Mm -hmm. So, But they wait for me, and they see me come in, I park my car. And um, 
wave my little plastic thing around in front of the magic eye on the wall, and the doors open. I can come in. And then I meet with them, we sit down and chat for a few minutes, and then usually we'll go ahead and go up to the third floor at the very end of the hall. And I reward all of us with a little glass of wine. And I tell them about my day, you know, what I've been up to, and hear about theirs, and the next day we, we meet up sooner or later at some point during the day, either playing volley, chair volleyball or uh, exercise or a yoga class, something like that. Or at lunchtime we may meet up again. Well, I may not see them for a couple of days because I, I still have things to do outside of the building. I don't have to stay there all day long every day and I do have my own transportation. So I'm, I'm just free, you know, I, have, I can have free time or not, it's up to me what I want to do and, and what not. And, and if, if they need something, if they say, could you just please run me down to Walmart? Yes. And we have transportation that can take them, but it might not be on the right day. See, that can be a problem. Uh, so I have things I can offer them, they have things they can offer to me. And it works very well. Okay, I have some more questions, but I want to jump out and ask questions from the audience. What are, the, what are your burning questions? Yes. What are the locations of each of these three facilities? Okay, communities. Okay, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, we, let me explain that so we go through this story many times. When we say the word facilities, it kind of has a negative feel, and those of us in the senior industry talk, these are not facilities, they are communities. And that's, some people have been around for a while, they're in the downsizing club, so it's that kind of, can't say that word. Uh, where are they, they located? Okay. We, uh, Oaks Gracious Living is on Williams Drive. Uh, 1200 block. 1200 block. It had the, the flags are there. The new Goddard School is just before yeah, that door. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, if any of you like to shop at Judas, it's across the street from Judas, so down a short distance. Uh, if you can't find Betty at the Oaks, she may be at Judas. So that, that was <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> so um, uh, Longhorn Village is in Steiner Ranch of Highway 620. Back in, if you, especially for families in Steiner Ranch, it's just amazing, but you don't, you know. And they will let people other than Longhorns there, even though it's called <laughs> Longhorn Village. Um, but that's where that is. And you automatically become a Texas X when you move to Longhorn Village, so. Oh, that yeah. eliminated some people, and I don't want well, that. Well, it's associated with the University of Texas when yeah. it started. Uh, oh yeah, there's Aggie's t-shirt, thank you. Um, Bev lives at Provident Crossings, which is down on A.W. Grimes, just before Highway 45. You know, and she mentioned that she still comes back to Georgetown quite a bit. And um, she's, we, we happen to go to the same church, and she's very active in the church, and people, oh, what's gonna happen? She's not gonna play in our bell choir anymore. <laughs> you know, she's there. She's still very involved, and you know, so she is able to balance that. It works well for you, but as you mentioned, you're involved with the choir at Provident too, and Bible study down there. But it wasn't like she gave up her whole life and friends here. So, but that's where they are. Okay, Jim, then Beth. Jim. Yeah. Um, I've been waiting to hear what you're going to say about pets. We just had a new dog. Dog's about two years old. And about this big. Yeah, right. right. Pets. Pets. So they're asking about pets. Now, I don't think any of you have had pets yourselves, do you? No, I do not have a pet. And over the last year, um, people with pets were asked to live on the first floor where they have easy access in and out to take their dog. Uh, in and out. If you had a cat or a bird, you could have that on the second or third floor. Over the past year, I think things have changed and it's discriminatory 
if you tell a person they cannot have their emotional support dog on the second or third floor. <laughs> so now we do have people that have a, a dog on the second or third floor and they, they have special doors. They can come down the elevator and then they need to go out the side door. They do not come through the lobby, but they have to go out through the side door to take their animal out. So some communities have special areas, and you know, often there's been in there right now with special needs of dogs and all. Uh, Christy from Westland, uh, you, are they, are they still first floor or in? No, we, we allow pets on every floor, but I interview all the dogs. Do not <laughs> stay in the apartment where the dogs have to be, in the, the resident have to be able to, you know, get on an elevator and take the dog out. So, and even when that's an important part, it also can affect, see if I'm right on this, and I'll ask Jessica too, if there's a waiting list, and that's one of the things when some people move up or down less faster or slower, but if you have a pet that may influence, or it used to, because when we used to be on first floor, I thought, but anyway, pets are allowed, generally they're going to be pet deposits, but just find out the information. People won't even see your little dog, Jim. I mean, you, oh. you know, service dogs are always allowed with the best. It had to have best. An emotional support dog has to have a certificate that says it is an emotional support dog. And so I did ask the manager specifically, does every dog on the second or third floor have one of those certificates? And she said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> So, uh, uh, so pets are welcome. Were you going to add anything? Yeah, I was going to say, as far as I know, there's no restrictions for pets <laughs> at Longhorn Village on any of the floors. The only restriction is, uh, Beverly mentioned, they're not supposed to take them through the lobby and the front entrance. They do use the basically the garage exits uh, to take their pets out for walks and stuff. But just... Jessica, what about pets at uh, North Star? Yeah, well, no, free, uh, no free restrictions, but we do interview the dog. Interview the dog, yeah. okay. <laughs> Just so you can control the dog. Okay. Uh, Beth and then Ron. Well, I have some friends that lived at the Oaks, and, uh, and then they moved. And I wonder, do, does the Oaks not have memory care or the level of care? No, Oaks is only independent living. Oaks Gracious Living, where Betty lived. She knew that, that that was okay with her. You can bring in assistance, you know, where it can seem to be like assisted living. But whereas we've said Wesley and they're different buildings, but they do have an independent assisted memory care and all. The same as Delaney has that, Grand Living has that, but Oaks, <coughs> other than bringing in support. My mother lived in a retirement community for 15 years in Austin and uh, when it was sold I think it was sold three times during that time the level of what you had changed and that really has kept me home. Okay she raised the point when her mother lived in a community in Austin and over a number of years it, it was sold change management and all and it affected the quality of life there. That does happen. One of the questions that Nathan mentioned, he really researched the, uh, you know, stability and all, because we have no control over that, you know, but, but, but you're right, and I know there's some places around that that has happened here, and people say it's not like what it was when I moved here. You know, we have no control, do the homework you have, and you know what, if something doesn't work, guess what, you move. You know, we've already made the big move, we've gotten rid of stuff, this would be a lot easier. But, I mean, <laughs> so, okay, Ron. Yeah, well, I um, was in a luxury independent living uh, three years ago. Right. Moved out after one year because services went downhill. The increase in rents, was, uh, there was no predictability as to what rent was going to increase and what amenities were going to be cut, and there were a lot cut. Some you know, were explainable because of flu, but others were just trying to save a buck here and there. You know, those kinds of things happen. I know you have made several moves from what you've shared with me. We did the best we can. We do your homework, you know, and we hope it's better. If it's not working, 
Kelly. Well, you can you can ask them you know, how many times have you increased rent? You know, in the past three years. Um, trying to get some history of what your practices. Right, their financial stability and plans and all other questions people have. Uh, Marianne, do you mean the type of facility? <laughs> Self correction is great. A lot of people who are truly interested in that particular place to spend some time as a resident to see what life there might be. Uh, part of it's going to depend on the occupancy rate. There have been some at some times where you can even stay a short period of time, but we see you know, if their goal is to keep their apartments occupied. So, I don't know, um, Jessica, do you do any kind of short-term trial periods at uh, North Star? Yeah, we have a guest suite, so you can always choose to stay in the guest suite for any period of time. A guest I suite. Know. And that's what some of the communities have had, a guest suite. So you could try it out, I think. How many days? You got up to a week, or what did you say? How long did they stay? We don't have a limit on it. We have a rental problem, and you pay by the night. So. Okay. You pay by the night, you work it out with the community. I think, um, okay, so I'll, I'll ask uh, Christy when she comes back. It varies community to community, but you can certainly ask and see. Other questions? Yes, Judy. The points that have not been addressed so far is when it comes to my turn, I have no idea in this area. I've got some daughters in Dallas over there, so I've given up everything. Yeah, uh, and I know there are others of you who do not have family in the immediate area, and then there have been others who have asked about even like someone to, and we talked in earlier seminars about Medicare and all that, and you know, being sure you have your own advocates, and, and we're working on one of our programs this year to have more information about who can help you, you know, but the other thing is, when someone does decide to make the move, you don't have to do it all yourself. We've got professionals who can do a lot of help and just simplify it considerably. I mean, we have the whole downsizing business, so we can cover all those areas. But, you know, and we have different ways of involving <coughs> families. Some people wait to, they're kind of moved or almost moved to tell their kids, guess what? Um, you know, others, you know, involve them in the beginning. Many of I know when I talk to people about this, I'm more than, I, mean, I welcome the opportunity if the kids aren't here locally, we can do phone calls, we can do Zoom calls, and involve them in the whole decision making. Nathan, you want to add? Well, I was going to say that that involved kind of our decision process too, because my family, I have two sisters, they live in Washington State. My wife has two sisters that live in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and uh, so in, we kind of looked at that as a possibility that we move to either state to retire. Uh, but we liked it here. We liked the weather. We liked not having to shovel snow. We liked not being poured rain on constantly, although that's changing. But uh, so uh, we decided to stay here and we'll make arrangements to visit. And I would say that the other residents that live at Longhorn Village, we know a lot of them have family, uh, either close or not so close, but uh, you were mentioning the guest suites. We do have guest suites, so when family comes and stays, they have a place to stay with you if uh, they so desire. Um, and I guess my family was kind of always, you want them close, but not too close. <laughs> this is for you, Virginia. I, I think you gave us a list of questions to ask when you go interview these places. And definitely get that list from Virginia, if it's not in your notebooks now. But it gave you all the questions to ask that we have talked about. Rent, how often does rent increase, you know, et cetera. Do you allow pets, all that. But all kinds of questions that you can ask. 
I think there was one of our handouts last month and there was a link to it. So that would have been in the October packet, but it was uh, those kinds of questions. I, I would say if you keep your car, and I still have mine, that you study the traffic patterns, the, the traffic <laughs> around between Round Rock and Georgetown has just become almost unbearable. Luckily, I have two ways I can come into Georgetown. I call A.W. Grimes to 1460 the back way, and I take that quite often and pray that I get green lights instead of all of the red lights, because every time I go, they put up another stoplight. But it avoids 35 when there's an accident on 35, as there was this morning, and it just makes it impossible to get into town. So it's always important to check that out. And he mentioned the bus schedule. It may not run every day at the time you want it. So that's a very important question to ask if you're going to give up your car. Okay, we're gonna to need to conclude, but before I give you some a brief wrap up, this is one of those rapid fire, the short answers. Uh, what advice would you give people who are considering the possibility, just a very short, what would your advice be, Betty? Go out and look around first. Okay, go and check them out. Nathan? Just understand the facilities that are available. Community, that's okay. <laughs> know what's happening. Some people ask me, well, how do we know? How do we find this? And on our website, seniorslivingsmarter.com, there's an area there. We focused on the area of communities in the Georgetown, Round Rock, Leander area, there are other lists out there. Okay, see what's out there, visit Beverly. And same, same with me, except I would add, if you pick one out, go visit several times. Don't just go one day. Don't just eat one meal there. Go several times at different times of the day, eat several meals there, and then make the decision. Okay, we're going to wrap up. We'll answer. Okay, Mary, this last one. Yes. One, one meeting a few years ago I attended here, the best advice I ever heard from a, a, one who had moved already, she said, do it before you have to. Oh, right, that's a great wrap up. She said, yeah. make the move before you have to. We often say before the crisis occurs. You heard <laughs> reference to people moving so they can enjoy the lifestyle. Take advantage of that. I want to thank our panel for sharing with us today. Thank you for being here. Uh, Brielle has out the previous packets from previous meetings. If you want to pick up some of that, um, our panelists will be around to visit with you. We do not have a December meeting. We will be back in January. In your handout, there's a tentative speech list of seminars for next year. There may be some adjustments and all, but have a great holidays. And for those of you who are veterans, for our Veterans Day, thank you and your family for your services. Feel free to call for questions. Visit with our education partners and our families. Thanks for being here.